everyone and welcome back to another episode of the Blue Collar DM, the channel dedicated to breaking down barriers for new players and dungeon masters alike. My name is Howard as always and today we're actually going to be going back over to the computer. We're going back and talking about Fantasy Grounds Unity, some tips and tricks for you guys because you guys had some questions, I've got some answers. Without further ado, let's get into it. Now, in order to go over these advanced level tips and tricks on Fantasy Grounds Unity, we're actually going to go over to the computer and we're actually going to go into spell casting. We're going to talk about how spell slots work, how the spell casting system generally works within Fantasy Grounds Unity. We're also going to talk about leveling your character and a couple other different functions within the software. Now, if you have any questions about Fantasy Grounds Unity or anything about the fifth edition Dungeons and Dragons rule set, because that is the uh, rule set that I'm most familiar with as a dungeon master, make sure you leave comments down here in the comment section as well because I'll be able to answer those questions. We also have a really good community following the channel now, so they'll be able to answer some of your questions as well. Also, make sure you subscribe, hit that notification bell for the channel so that way you get notified when any Dungeons & Dragons content or any other Fantasy Grounds Unity content or maybe even Roll20 content that comes out for the channel. Now, let's go over the computer and let's get into it. All right, so now that we're in Fantasy Grounds, we can go into depth a little bit more on the character uh, creation and the player character side of things. So. Um, I'm actually in create a character mode here on the computer, and I actually picked the uh, D and D um, background just because I like the flavor of it. Especially because uh, um, this is the mode that I'm playing in. Uh, some of these things actually still do apply for your other rule sets, so keep that in mind as we're going through this. Uh, might be a little bit different depending on the rule set for your game. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make a new PC. So we still have Jeffrey the Barbarian and Sarah, but we do no longer have Uman the Human. So I'm actually going to make Uman the Human here. Uh, for our purposes, just so that way uh, we can actually have a spellcaster this time. So that way we can have actually understand how that goes. Um, after some feedback on the last video, um, we're actually going to do our ability scores first test because that will actually auto calculate everything out for us so we don't have to worry about it. So um, I want my, we're going to still use the standard array. So we got a 15 in intelligence. We'll throw our 14 in constitution because I want a high con save. 13 in dex. We'll put the wisdom as 12. Charisma is 10 and the um, strength is going to be 8. Um, so we have 15, 14, 13, 12, 10, and 8. Easy enough. Um, we're going to pick our class now. So if I move this guy off to the side, hit that classes, and it's going to bring them all up here. And it has the nice D&D &D, uh, style icons here. Uh, we're actually going to pick a wizard. So we're actually going to drag and drop this wizard over to the class section. Boom, wizard's in there. Now we get to pick our two skills. Uh, I'm going to pick, um, for the purposes of this, I'm going to pick and investigation. So that and that. So and then I'm gonna keep that wizard data. Oops, excuse me. I clicked the compendium part of it. There we go. So there's our wizard data just so we can kind of go over that stuff that we get as far as items are concerned. And then we'll go into backgrounds. I already pre-picked the alkalite background uh, just because um, the sage background gives you arcana proficiency. I don't want that. I like the idea of also having proficiency in something different. So insight and religion, good for my guy. Um, so we'll drag that alkalite over here. And then the next thing we're going to pick is our race. Um, but I am going to pull up that alkalite just so we can have that stuff for the items later on, like we did in the last video. And then we're going to pick our race. So we come into here. We're going to pick human again. And we'll drag and drop that over here. Boom. Everything already auto-calculates. So our AC went up. Our ability scores went up. Everything went up. So... Easy enough there. And then let's get into our items really quick. I don't want to spend too much time on stuff that we've already covered. Um, so we are going to skip some of the role playing stuff of dragging and dropping that kind of stuff in. Um, keep in mind, Fantasy Grand Unity still kind of in beta. So some things do take a little while to load. Usually when it loads, it, it's good and loaded forever, is what I like to say. Um, but not always. So just keep that in mind as you're going through it. And let's see here. So. We're going to get quarterstaff or a dagger. Let's check to pick a dagger because this character is a um, a dex um, wizard. So it just makes more sense. Uh, component pouch or an arcane focus. I'll just take the... Oh, we're thinking. I think we're thinking. There we go. Component pouch. I'll just throw that over here. Boom. Uh, scholar's pack or an explorer's pack. Um, so something to keep in mind when you're doing this stuff is that if you actually take the SRD data instead of the basic rules data, it will actually populate everything that's in that kit. So that's something I learned uh, thanks to um, Tasman for that. And uh, I'll leave a link to his YouTube down below because he's got some good stuff, uh, good breakdown videos of Fantasy Ground Unity as well. 
And then let's look for our spell book. And we'll just drag and drop that over. Boom. So, wizard item, done. Alkalite item, holy symbol. Uh, that doesn't actually, I don't believe holy symbol actually populates when you look it up. Holy. It brings up other stuff. Symbol. Scroll of symbol. So, um, for some things we will have to add them manually, which is not a problem. We can easily do that. We just hit that button. Add for equipment. Use time to think. I'm also taxing my system a lot by recording this all at the same time, so it's going to be a little bit slower. Won't necessarily be as slow for you. And then I'm going to say that it weighs an ounce, so um, or 0.1 pounds, just because I need to put a weight on it. Um, a prayer book or a prayer wheel, again, uh, doesn't have that in here, so we'll just add the prayer book. Prayer book. We'll say it weighs as much as the spell book. And then incense it does have, so we can type in incense. We have one block of incense there, but we need five, so we'll just come up here to incense, change that to a five. Um, believe it or not, they do have the vestments in here, ironically. Um, so we can drag and drop that over. Uh, common clothes. Remember, just type in clothes because it'll give you everything. And then that's all our items, and then we do need to put in our treasure. Uh, so we'll change this to, we'll put in all of our inputs for these. So we got copper pieces, silver pieces, electrum pieces, gold pieces, and platinum pieces. And we're starting out with 15 gold pieces, so easy enough there. So now, let's talk spells. So I will have to bring up the wizard again, just to bring him back up. And for wizards, we get um, three cantrips of our choice at first level. Um, actually, I still on spell casting. Um, so at first level, we get three cantrips of our choice from the wizard spell list, and then we're also going to be able to add to our spell book. So if we come over to actions here, we'll be able to see everything here that we have for actions. So we have our dagger. We can throw our dagger. We can um, use it as a melee weapon, but we also have the spell slots here. We can actually check these off as we use them, and you'll see why that's important here in a second. So I'm going to click on spells. It's going to take a second to load, as usual. This is decaf. I've already had two cups of coffee this morning, um, but I just like the taste of black coffee. Um, at me if you uh, disagree. Um, but uh, here we have all of our spells here. And I'm going to pick, um, so we can pick the source, and I'm going to pick the wizard. So this will give me all the wizard spells, and only the wizard spells. And then if I want to choose a level and I want to pick cantrips, we just pick level zero. And now this is all the wizard cantrips that we have in the game. And the way we add these to our spell list or spell book is we actually just grab it here, and we drag it on over, and boom, puts it in there. Perfect, easy enough. So Firebolt, uh, we have a wizard that's a human, so we'll take Light as well. And then Prestidigitation, sure, why not? I like Prestidigitation, it's fun. So then we want to do our spell slot, our slotted spells, so our level one spells. And at first level, we can actually, oops, excuse me, um, we can actually pick uh, six at the start um, at first level. So, um, and one thing you can also do to kind of help you break down this list so you don't get like a really long, huge list is you can actually click on this little tab here. It, right now it says spells cantrips, but there will be one that says spells level one. And you can hide those and then bring them up whenever you need them. So for level one spells, we got to pick six. So I'm going to pick, um, I like to start with detect magic and identify right off the bat. So that way I have two ritual spells for my wizard. So then I can prep my four. Um, which is based on the equation of your intelligence modifier plus your wizard level, um, is the amount of spells you can prep. So I like to have two rituals right off the bat, so that way I can just have my uh, prepared spells always ready. And let's take, let's see. Um, actually, let's get rid of identify. Actually, um, so wait, to get rid of a spell, you can actually just click on that button, um, this little edit icon, and you can actually get rid of it. I actually want Find Familiar. Find Familiar is more fun for me, so we're going to throw that over there. I want Grease. I always like Grease as a level 1 wizard, um, just because it can give you some good um, control over the battlefield. We'll take Magic Missile, Mage Armor, because we have a 12 AC, and then Shield, just for some good defensive utility for ourselves. And again, you can collapse that list. So then, whenever you cast a spell, um, you'll mark off your spell slots. And then when you mark off your second spell slot, this wizard list, oh, supposed to disappear. Oh, I know why. So I was actually looking at this on the base um, 
Sirenscape, or not Sirenscape, uh, which Sirens Script is a great utility uh, for any of your music. Uh, just make sure you at them if you use them in a stream. Um, but for Fantasy Grounds, um, when you use the regular Fantasy Grounds um, display, uh, it'll actually get rid of it. Actually, I think that's why. Yep, that is why, I think. No, maybe not. Um, it'll actually get rid of this uh, Spells Level 1 tab, and it'll take rid of it for you, um, which is always really cool. Um, so that way you can have that available to you. And for whatever reason, it's also giving you spells. It's giving us some very interesting looking stuff here. So, um, but you can actually mark off your spells prepared. Um, so in this case, we'll prepare our Grease, our Mage Armor, our Magic Missile, and our Shield. We'll have those prepared. These ones are our Ritual spells, so we don't need to prepare them. And then we can, s and then whenever we're, now that we're done preparing, we can actually come in here. It actually shows us what spells we have prepared, so that way we know that. And then if we check all these off, yeah, you have to prepare them first. So um, then when you uh, actually use your first spell, when you use your spells, it'll actually take that option off of your spell list. So it makes it um, a little bit more intuitive for you um, as you're going through it, so that way it'll actually get rid of them. All right, so now that we've done that, let's go over our, um, what happens when you gain experience. So we actually do need to add, um, Need to add Uman Human into our tracker here, so let's throw him over here. So this is the party sheet, and this is more of a thing for DMs to kind of manage, um, but it can be helpful um, to know what kind of goes into this. So you have your main, you have your inventory. Um, it actually has party gold and everything, and it has the party inventory here too. Um, has a watch order. You can actually choose your marching formation if you want. By if I can get it to do what I want it to do. Oh yeah, you gotta click and drag the. If have token, that's why. I don't have a token for Umon the Human right now, but um, we can easily fix that. And, um, and I'll do that right now, actually. Let's get rid of that. Let's just add a token for him. Um, let's, that's another place you can actually pick it. You don't have to necessarily just go to assets. You can actually come in here. Um, let's pick Smite Work tokens, and let's pick um, this Human Wizard. There we go. Should be enough. Now, if we go into the order, we can actually throw him on the marching order. Easy enough. So if we come into experience points, um, you'll see we have all three of our characters here. And I wonder if I can, there we go. Now Uman's over there. Um, and we can actually award experience points as a DM from this um, list. And actually, Uman and Human, I need to change one thing. Uh, so for whatever reason, it doesn't automatically add in uh, what you need for your level ups. Um, I'm not really sure 100% why that is. But if we actually click on this little hourglass here, we can actually put in for our next level, we need 300 hit points because that is the level up from level one to level two. And then if we take our encounter from last game, I guess I need to switch my view mode to GM, and go to our encounters tab here. We can actually drag that old dragon encounter that we had from last time. And let's say our characters actually defeated this dragon encounter. So there's 1,150 experience points to be divided up between all of them. So if we award it, it'll actually, oh wait, I don't need to click that one. I click this button. Oh, he's kind of messing these up all the time. You'll see in the channel actually reward and it'll divide it all up. And now everyone's leveled up to level one. Uh, or has the experience points. So um, this is helpful when you're in the middle of a session if you don't want to get characters to have to go through level up in the session. Then they can actually do it um, later on down the line from their own platform. So um, now Uman the Human is enough to actually level up. So, oops, I actually clicked on, he was proficient. Strength saving throws, he is not. Um, so now we're actually we're ready to level up. So if we actually come into here, we actually see wizard here. Say if we want to just level up our wizard class again. We can actually click on this little dragon, drag it over to the wizard, and now we're level two. So now we can actually pick which school we want to be. Um, because I only have the SRD and the basic rules, I only have the choice of schools of evocation. So we'll just pick that, and we'll click OK. So school of evocation has been added. Um, and um, it's leveled our character up. It's gotten, if we come over back to our abilities, you'll see arcane recovery is on here now, or it should have been on here before. <laughs> Um, our arcane traditions on here now for when we reach the second level and we have evocation savant we have our sculpt spells from our evocation school so everything's in there um, and it's uh, pre-populated for you so you can always refer back to in here um, I didn't pick my languages but that's not a worry we can always type that in um, proficiencies we have those there now, let's say if we had a tool proficiency. So one thing that you can do, um, which I didn't do before um, because um, there was no way to just intuitively drag and drop, and it's usually because sometimes tool proficiencies require um, different uh, stats for the check. Um, but if you're always going to use the same one, so let's say it's Thieves Tools. So let's edit and add in Thieves Tools. So let's put in our Thieves Tools. 
and we'll say it is a dex related stat and then we'll put in our proficiency so there now we have our proficiency and our tools already there and then we can actually take it roll it um, in the tracker boom these tools proficient dex mod boom there it is so that's how you add a tool proficiency you have to do it in the skills tab unfortunately um, there's no way uh, to actually do it any other way for whatever reason. I'm not really sure why, um, but that's just kind of how it is in there. And then if any of you guys want to see, let's actually use a spell. So let's bring up a um, bring up a map really quick. We'll use that old map from before. Under dark tunnels. Good. We'll put it to full screen so that way we can see it. And we'll drag Umon the Human down here. Maybe. If it'll let me. There we go. It doesn't like it when you're really far out. You actually kind of have to zoom in. It's really strange. So now we have Umon the Human. We can actually double click him, bring him back up. Um, from the combat tracker, if not, nope, that's party sheet. From the combat tracker, you can actually uh, double click here. And here, I'll show you. You can actually click here and it'll bring up the character sheet as well. So that's another thing you can do as a DM if you want to look in there. And let's say we want to cast a spell. Let's say we actually want to cast Magic Missile on um, on Sarah, sure. So we can actually click, drag, bring it over. Oh, I clicked on Mage Armor, my bad. So we actually added Mage Armor to her. So say if we wanted to do Magic Missile, we can just drag and drop. Um, the other thing you can actually do is if you come into the Combat Dragger, you can also take um, your spell and bring it and actually drag it and then it'll also apply the damage to the same person as well and you can see that here we did two damage the first time and three damage the second time so there's a couple different ways you can do that now so that way you kind of have a good understanding of that and this is basically what's going to actually wrap up our session today i just wanted you guys to kind of have a good understanding on the level up system how it kind of works as a player character so that way you can see it um and then from the dm side awarding experience points so that way it kind of goes hand in hand so i didn't want to cover that in separate videos uh, but I will cover it again probably in another DM's guide just because that way you guys have it. Um, I wanted to show you guys how to track spell slots. I wanted you guys to see this, the tool stuff because we didn't go over that last time. Um, but that's kind of some just additional information for you guys um, from a player's perspective. Now, let's get off the computer and let's uh, wrap this up. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is actually going to end our breakdown of those advanced level tips and tricks for Fantasy Grounds Unity. Now, I'm sure you guys have some questions. Make sure you leave comments down in the comment section below if you have any of those questions. Also, make sure you like the video because it gives me some really good feedback that you want to see more Fantasy Grounds Unity content and some of these tutorials on the channel. Also, make sure you subscribe, hit that notification bell so that way you know when further content on Fantasy Grounds Unity, Roll20, or maybe even Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition comes out on the channel. I hope you guys learned a little bit more about Fantasy Grounds Unity with some of these advanced tips and tricks. And until next time, I'll see you all soon.